This is Me Before Mom, the podcast that helps moms stay connected to themselves while doing the most important job they'll ever have. And I'm your host, Bert Anderson. Hey, this is Bert, and you are listening to Me Before Mom in a Pandemic. It's sometimes it's fun to say in a pandemic. But what I have to share with you guys today, it's personal. I, I have not talked about this with many people at all. Uh, some of you who are listening, you guys are, are going to completely understand with what I have to say. And some of you will probably not get it at all. But I still think that it's a really important message for you to hear. Being an extrovert during lockdown brought me to my lowest point. So to clarify, I'm a pretty positive person. I can find the bright side in pretty much any situation. If it's raining outside, that's okay because we can, I can figure out something to do inside and bonus points, I don't have to water my garden, which is great if I'm not invited to a friend's birthday party or any kind of a party while it, it still stings, even though I'm 37 years old, I can find the positive side of that in thinking there's got to be a logical explanation for this and that's okay because really I should be doing this other thing instead. But when it came to spring 2020, watching COVID-19 unravel in real time in the world, there was so much unknown about what we were dealing with that try as I might, I could not figure out how to find the silver lining in COVID-19. That's a really big thing for me to admit. There was no silver lining, guys. Zero. Sure, I'd have days where things were okay. We would do something fun as a family. Or I had spent the day coloring and listening to an audio drama, which is one of my favorite things to do. Now, those, those were good days. I liked those days. But if I'm being completely honest, the better part of March through to the end of May, the happiness that I usually find, it was gone. It was completely gone. The things for me that make being alive worth it and wonderful, they were gone. COVID-19 took those things and they weren't there anymore. We couldn't go anywhere. We had to be in our houses. We couldn't see people in real life. I couldn't even go to the gym, which is a huge part of my routine. And it's a big deal for my mental health, but I couldn't go. The gyms were closed. They were closed. And as much of an extrovert as I am, I, I could not get any time for myself in my own home. I had no alone time, zero. The kids were always there and there was no place for anybody to go. Every day I woke up and it was the exact same one as before. What are we going to do today? My kids would ask. And I would say every single day, the same thing we did yesterday, nothing. March was a really bad month because it's still cold in Minnesota and there's snow on the ground, but it's also muddy and the kids, they couldn't get outside to play. School was spent online doing distance learning. God bless distance learning. Dance class for my daughter was done through Zoom and my gym even had virtual Zoom classes. And the gym, the, the classes on Zoom were effective, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same. And nothing rang truer than one day I was trying to get my six-year-old to participate in her Zoom dance class, it, which was always a battle. And I asked her because she loves to dance. I was like, what's wrong? Like, why don't you like this? I'm thinking you can still see people and surely you're happy about this. And she told me she hated it 
And the reason why was because she missed her friends. And dancing and doing dance cl class on Zoom wasn't the same as being in the dance studio with her friends. She was right. My six-year-old was absolutely right. Technology has, has given us a lot to be grateful for. And, and I honestly, I cannot imagine what this pandemic would be like if we didn't have the technology we do today. And you know that I love my social media platforms. I'm a social media manager, so I like my technology and I like social media a lot. But it's, it cannot and it will never replace seeing my girlfriends or watching my kids play with their friends in real life. We were meant to do life together as a community, not through screens, but in person. In COVID-19, it took that away. About every week, I would have one bad day, one day where I would think, God, what is the point of all of this? And I, I couldn't see an end to it. Sure, the experts were reassuring the public that, you know, lockdown wasn't going to last forever. The pandemic would not last for forever. But I, I couldn't see an end in sight. There was no hope. I had completely lost hope. Every daily briefing we had in Minnesota turned into a coin toss, as far as my feelings were concerned. If our governor had positive things to report, then I would be okay. And if he didn't, which happened more often than not, I would be a wreck. So soon I decided that I didn't want to be in on the know anymore. I didn't want to know the news. So I delegated that task to my husband and I told him, please just tell me if something important happens and I need to know about it because I can't take the up and down of this anymore. So when not watching the news wasn't really helping with my attitude or my mood anymore, I, I decided to take the Facebook app off of my phone because I was finding that I was spending way too much time just scrolling through the news feed. And so many people had so many different opinions on what was going on with COVID-19, whether it was a, you know, conspiracy theory that it's not real, or, you know, you were seeing real life stories from people who had experienced it. It was just too much. And the, the constant pull from both directions on my Facebook newsfeed was really, really bringing me down. And it was just really messing with my head. So I took Facebook off my phone and, and that did help, but it wasn't enough. So I have to say that, you know, during this time when I was supposed to be parenting, uh, I was functioning well. My children are still alive. They are well adjusted. They've been eating. I made clean you know, I, I cleaned their clothes, I made them food, everything is okay. Was I thriving during this time? No, no, I was functioning, I was not thriving. And one day, everything just piled into one and it just fell down on top of me. And when I tried to look out ahead to the future, when I tried to find the silver lining and the hope, hope felt lost. I mean, think about that. Every thing that I loved about life was gone. And I, I could not see where hope was. After an evening with a lot of crying, trying to hide my emotions from my kids because I didn't want to make them upset, I didn't want them to see me struggling. I, I got to the point where I gave up trying to hide. I didn't walk around sobbing or wailing, uh, but they knew that I was sad and they knew that something was, was wrong. And my sweet youngest child, my six-year-old Kira, she is always trying to fix things. And she came up to me and she patted me on the back and she said simply, mommy, when I feel sick, I just make myself feel happy and then I'm not sick. And 
I couldn't help but thinking like, oh, if only, if only life was so simple, sweet child. But it can, it can be that simple. It, it really, there is a simple solution to all of this. It's not, it's not the easy one. Uh, it is definitely not, not the path I ever wanted to do because I don't like to feel negative feelings. I like to avoid them. But it became glaringly obvious that I needed to start going to counseling. Just admitting that to you guys, just telling you, feels like a weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. So having to sit and talk with somebody about my feelings, it's not easy. And if you've gone through counseling, you probably know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, you sitting and talking about your feelings, you almost get this hangover that happens after an hour of counseling. You feel, I feel tired. Um, I have a headache. And, and if you happen to cry during the session, the headache that comes with that is 10 times worse. But as, as hard as this has been, I wonder if, if COVID-19 wasn't the push that I always needed to ask for help. I mean, maybe to truly live, I needed to feel like there was no help. And then maybe I needed to find it again by talking to somebody about my deepest, darkest thoughts. I'm hopeful again now. I can tell you I, I wouldn't be if I didn't have a place or someone where I could be vulnerable and share my innermost thoughts. We talk on Zoom. Well, it's a HIPAA compliant thing like Zoom, telehealth. And it's good. It's good for the soul. It's what I need. You know, as moms, we set the temperature in our homes. And you've heard me say this before. But you have got to put your oxygen mask on first. And for me, going to counseling was taking my own advice and putting my oxygen mask on first. I finally had to take care of myself, deal with my negative emotions that I like to run away from, rather than just trying to push through. Because pushing through doesn't ever fix the problem. It just puts a Band-Aid on it. I'm sharing this with you guys because, because I really feel like if I am feeling this way, there's got to be somebody else out there who's feeling the same way. And if you're feeling the same way that I'm feeling, that I felt, please listen to me when I say that you need to ask for help and it's okay. Mental health is, is so important. And I think all too often we see it as a sign of weakness, but I think a lot more of us struggle with it than we know. So, Mama, your mental health matters. It really does. And getting help, it's, it's the best investment you will ever make. It's the best investment of time. It's the best investment of resources. And you have to do it. You have to take care of yourself. It's good for the soul. If you're feeling hopeless, like I was, you're not alone. I'm, I'm right there with you. I was right there with you. And we'll get through this. We're going to have to work through it, but, but we'll get through it. And we will be stronger on the other side because of it. And that's why it's especially important during this time that you're kind to yourself and you accept that you're not perfect and you're not Wonder Woman. Or maybe you are Wonder Woman because you admit that you're not perfect and you need help. But be kind to yourself while you're going through all of this. Always be kind. That's all we have. Thank you so much for listening. 
Be sure to connect with me on BertMAnderson.com and please visit our website, matriarchdm.com, for all of the show notes and to hear other awesome podcasts.